Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. We got to recap game one of the American League Championship Series. The Houston Astros take it. They win. Red Sox opposite. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball brought to you by DraftKings. My name's Jimmy. With me is Jake. In the corner, we have producer BBD. Without us, Trevor Plouffe. He is without us. We are without him. He's not here. We miss him terribly. Jake, how are you doing? James, BBD, uh, Dad Trev doing his daddy duties. Everyone live in the chat. Noodle the Doodle Dog, who's working with me today for a show from home. And there's a little surprise, uh, which should have been less of a surprise if uh, I was intent to things in my life. Uh, Busy the Pug is here. One of Jess's friends uh, has a dog, Busy the Pug, who's staying with us this weekend. And I didn't know that, so I came home last night at about 1.30 a.m. or whenever we got home. Or it wasn't that late. Um, maybe it was. And, uh, yeah, it was a pretty surprise to see Noodle the Golden Doodle and Busy the Pug. But uh, we've become fast friends. So, uh, baseball and dogs. How about that? I came home and my dogs have uh, bad haircuts. Ooh, been there. Uh, it was one of those where, you know, what do you... You know how they cut my mom's dog when, when yeah. Noodle got the bad haircut the, 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 during Beach Week? Yeah. That's... My dogs now have that. The shaved ears... They look like military box head dogs, and it's like, you know, come on. I've been yeah. on both sides of that, you know. I've been the dog with the bad haircut, and I've seen dogs get bad haircuts. Yeah, so that was a bummer. Mm. Good for both of us for coming home, though. Yeah, agree. BBD's going home soon. BBD, does, do you think our audience knows about your living situation? We haven't really mentioned it. BBD lives in the Bronx now. BBD's a cop. I'm in Harlem. Oh. In Harlem. Yeah. That's why you guys were going to Harlem Burger. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Zach and I made that trip. But right over the bridge, walking walking to work every day. You're walking over the McCombs Bridge every day? Every morning, at least. I mean, I drive. That's cool. Take the Uber Honk. at night. Honk at them. Because it's night. So are you right over the bridge? Pretty much. It's like 10 minutes. 10 minute walk from my apartment to the bridge walk over and you guys know from there Don't when you get over the bridge do you go straight right left uh second i'm over the bridge the immediate right like in front of the stadium down 161st and i go into that duncan that's on the right there wow that's where uh the dodgers played yeah like right over that bridge where all those apartments are. That uh, used to be yeah. Ebbets Oh, Field. well, if I'm going back to the apartment, it's to the left off the bridge. Never mind that. So while that's walking okay. into work. I've walked okay. into work every day. Don't uh, walk home every day. Thanks to those that have been watching GeoGuessr with us. You can pretty much find out where BBD's been living and will be living. Um, I got to talk some baseball at some point. No. Just dogs and life. Dogs, life. BBD living close to the work so we can commute every day because he's a grinder. Uh, yeah. Baseball. I mean, it was a weird game. We watched it live. We'll burn it. We'll talk about it. Deal. Mm. Do you yeah. think that's fair? I think that's more than fair. How much do you think uh, this series has been decided after game one as a teaser? Ooh, how much this series has been decided? 85%. Okay. I'm not that high. I would say 65. I think coming into this series, the Astros need to like steal one game, like the Red Sox walk away and they're kind of like, oh, we had that game and we, we lost it. I think Boston needs two of those. Um, okay. So that's some analytics. Now let's do some burn analytics are they uh brought to us by anyone oh yeah they're brought to us by charity buzz 
Yes. And BBD has been buzzing over charity buzz. If you got into the hobby of card collecting and you're interested in current players, this is a, a good, good way to go into it because charity buzz is the premier marketplace for cause. You're into causes. They got you. They're hosting a philanthropic philanthropic hmm. trading card auction featuring highly coveted baseball and basketball cards. All right, Jake, do you get your following cards? Okay. Cards, cards, charity buzz head to cards.charitybuzz.com to explore the auction and bid on all the rare cards up for auction, including a tops. 1952 Mickey Mantle rookie card. Wow. Mm. I will. Maybe I will. Bid on that. With a PSA grade of eight. Funds raised benefit at risk youth through the Inspiring Children Foundation auction and will be live until Thursday, October 28th. Very close to my baby's pretend due date. If you're a card collector who also wants your money to go to a good cause, it's the best of both worlds. Visit visit cards.charitybuzz.com, and you can also follow at Charity Buzz on all the major social platforms, including Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So we have a third co-host that's not with us today who loves charities and loves the card game. He's addicted to the card game right now. So yeah. kind of feel like this ad was made for Trevor Plouffe. And it's one of the episodes that he's not on. So as a, sometimes. as a community, if everyone could just make sure to reach out to Trev uh, and let him know about cards.charitybuzz.com, I think he'd be interested. Tweet, tweet it, Trevor, and tell him thank you for your charity work. Yes. And tag at Charity Buzz while you're at it, I guess. Sure. Tag Charity Buzz. Yeah. But thank you for your charity, Trevor Plouffe. Two Zs. All right, let's do it. Hmm. A lot of pictures being used in this one. Mm, you hate that. The 2021 ALCS would kick off in Houston, Texas. Minute Maid Park looking like a 311 concert as Framber is the color of their energy with Valdez and the boys taking on Cora and the Sox. As they sail in with Chris on the mound, would he have it? Top one. Actually, both pitchers get in trouble. The only damage, Big Yordan with the sack fly. It's one nothing. Strohs. Kike, do you love me? He keeps it going. Are you kidding me? Tied up at once. Jose Altuve. Jose. Oh, no, it's an error. Bat through the wickets. Run scores. And then Hunter shoots down a big old RBI. It's 3-1 Sox. It stayed that way into the six after being loud early. This game got quiet until Jose Altuve. Jose Altuve. Net, net, okay for Jose as he hits the two-run homer. We're tied at three. And then it's time. Not Bruce Buffer, but Carlos Correa. Solo home run to make it four to three. Altuve with the Geico insurance sack fly to make it five. And boy, did they need it because there goes the bad man again. Kike, 425, important to some. Makes the score five to four, but that would be it. Astros go Valdez to Garcia to Javier to Mayton to Rayleigh to Stanek to Graven to Presley. Astros take game one, 5-4 final. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Thank you. A lot of pitchers, man. Baseball, baby. I think the Red Sox used a pitcher in inning. Not exactly what you want to do in a losing effort. And... Um, Astros used eight pitchers in, in nine innings, so they had to throw the uh, ninth inning because they were winning. But weird game because I we had more base, more runners reached than outs, but at, for a long time, the under was, like, in play. And then Kike hits the over at the very end, so it felt like a slugfest, but going into the eighth inning, it was, it was what, four to three? 
Going into the seventh inning, it was three to three. Four to three, uh, or five, five, three into the ninth, uh, four to three into the seventh. Yeah, both teams use eight pitchers. Um, you know, Framber, he, he really, I mean, he threw 64 pitches. He clearly didn't have his stuff. The Altuve double play didn't help him. Sale throws 61 uh, in 2.2. So that's kind of funny in hindsight. As he was clearly in survival mode, he, he hasn't been Chris Sale, especially versus righties. Um, although I know a lot of Red Sox people like what they saw, but then, yeah, the bullpen actually made it boring for a little bit. Uh, Javier, another big two inning outing, uh, Otto looked pretty good. And then, yeah, we were playing this game while we were watching it live and we were like, wait, the Red Sox have already used Brazier. Um, how are they going to piece together these final innings? They went to Hawk. He gets hit. He gives up the Altuve bomb. And I think that messed up their formula a little bit. Um, and man, that insurance run ends up looking huge late as Presley gives up one to Kike cause he's the best ever. I mean, he's getting in a Rosa Reina range. Um, and the Correa Homer is kind of, kind of the story. Correa Homer's badass. Kike takes over. Shouldn't be forgotten. Tanner, Tanner Hawk with a blown save in the sixth inning. Blown save. Look at all those pitchers the Red Sox used. Eight on both sides. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that we get some good pitching performances out of these two teams down the stretch. If we have starters going 2.2 and it's just like bullpen games out of two teams that aren't bullpen teams. But I don't know. Then, like, it was a good game at the end. Like, it was kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, that that's the thing. I mean, I, I know the NL starting pitchers, and, you know, even when we broke down some of the teams that didn't make the playoffs, uh, I think these those NL teams just have a more starting pitching. Um, you know, even when you think about, like, a, a team like the Mets or how other teams were built this year, the Phillies, you know, they the Phillies would be one of – would be easily the best starting rotation left. Um, but these are the two best hitting teams uh, in baseball. And, you know, they were showing that early. It was tough to get outs. And uh, and then, yeah, the game settled down. Guys kind of got in a groove. And uh, Correa's, Correa's the bad man. Correa and Altuve, dude. It's uh, Dusty said it after the game, and I... <laughs> I don't think he was trolling at all because I think Dusty's a little too old for that game, but he compared uh, Correa and Altuve to Brady and Gronk, which, I mean, if you're playing a Boston fan base, that's a good way to get under their skin just a little bit. Yeah, it's not the best comparison. I mean... Oh, almost a useless comparison. <clears throat> yeah, I, I was trying to piece it together to give Dusty some help, but I don't even... They're just two, two good players on good teams. Two, four guys that play sports for sure. Like you could be like uh, Acuna and Ozzy are you kind of like Brady and Gronk for us. Like yeah. Freddie and Acuna, just like the top two players on a team. Guys basically. that play for you. Yeah. <laughs> you and BBD have some Brady and Gronk going on. Oh, man. That's, uh, yeah. Hey, Dusty's got a plan. He said it for, for a reason. Yeah. yeah. I should get myself one of those Dusty has a plan shirts that we sold last year. Are those still available in our store? It should be. I mean, I, I don't know why we'd take down a beauty like that. Those are badass. I should get one for a stream. Um, yeah, it looks like we still do. That's huge. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think what... Um. So reliving last night's game, because it is, uh, you know, and we'll talk about it a little bit tonight, Evaldi's going, so we might get you an actual starting pitcher start for you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, th I mean, Altuve has the double play ball go through his legs. That uh, that was tough. And then, hey, you know, we're kind of thinking Red Sox magic. Trevor called us during the live stream and was calling, saying the series is over. It's Red Sox. Um, yeah, I don't know. Would you? It, so if if you knew Hawk was fully in play for this game, do you think you would have deployed him differently? 
Um, no. I I just think you need Sale to be good. Hmm. No, like in, I think the good plan is sale for the first time through and then, uh, Hulk because he's gross from the other side. So it's like a completely different look right after. Maybe I would have went, you know, um, they used Otto as the fireman, right? So then since they used him once, they weren't going to just burn him. So they gave Otto the next inning. Um, then they went Josh Taylor versus all the righties or versus no, because Brantley and your Don were in the first three. So they went Taylor yeah. for those three. So no, man, I really don't have much qualms about how core used the staff. Um, they just don't have besides Evaldi and they just didn't have great options at, uh, for length since sales kind of a dud. I think that's the, that's the elephant in the room is like sales shouldn't pitch the rest of this postseason if that's all he can offer you. Well, even, I mean, we're getting in this conversation about innings that I, I know you've been locked in on for a while. I mean, sale gives you 2.2. You don't think that role can be used for them? 2.2, one 2 earned? 2.2, I think very lucky that it was only one earned run. But. Yeah, I think they're better formulas for the Red Sox. That's why I don't think this really changed the series that much is if Pavetta gives you 70, 80, like he was doing in the in the DS, and Evaldi and Erod gives you a boring five or six. Like those are the three games that I think the Red Sox might have a better chance winning. But this sale to rookie uh Hulk formula, like isn't their best. It's just kind of nature of the beast that this was their game one. They're mm -hmm. lucky that Framer was also rough but in the end they lose so yeah and i i think uh, going back to actual bullpen bullpens i mean Hauk was supposed to be their weapon that's supposed to be the red sox go weapon he gives up the two-run homer and then robles and sawamura who who follow him give up runs meanwhile out of that houston pen and uh, you know the way we talk about it it's when we talk great bullpens houston normally doesn't jump to the top of the list but Presley and Graveman have been pretty good all year. Presley's the one that does get clipped by Kike because he's undefeated this this October. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, they go Javier with two clean innings, pretty dominant again. He did the same thing against the White Sox and made that game boring and kind of took over. Um, so uh, Houston's bullpen does deserve a lot of love in this game. I mean, they go quick math, 7.1, one earned. Um, it's a hell of an outing. Yeah, I mean, Framer was the only guy to give up multiple hits. So I, I, I would have thought Javier would have went longer or could have, but well, I think that might be that that might be the the early playoff move here. You know, where these guys are going to get used. That if you get your two clean for Javier in twenty eight pitches, and you've got a fully rested bullpen heading into this series. I think you shake hands and move on so you can use him another day. Yeah. I think Hauk might be a little gassed because they're using him on two days rest. He's given up a home run his last two games, like wander clipped him. Uh, and then this game, like I think, I think they might've wanted more out of him in game in that game as well against the Rays. Wander got him. He didn't look sharp. So they moved on, but he was coming off injury, right? How? At the end of the year? Or is that Whitlock? I'm thinking of Whitlock. But anyway, You're thinking of I don't know. I just don't like this game. The the yeah. sale out game. If they if the Red Sox won it, I would feel like pretty good about them moving forward. So uh, it doesn't kill me the Sox fan that they lost it. Surprisingly, Sale and like Hauk were their two most like sexy talked about pitchers aren't their best combo in my opinion. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah. I mean, tough, tough for me. I, I'm going to wait to see more from Hauk this series before saying tired or anything like that. I mean, when you say he gets clipped by Wander Franco, who was a, kind of announcing himself to the world and, uh, Jose Altuve. I mean, that's one, one guy who's done it a lot. And one guy who I think is about to do it a lot. Um, 
Good for Houston getting this win. Correa, I mean, the, the absolute pimp job of all pimp jobs. Pointing to his watch because it's playoff time. Nice dude. It's his time. Um, it's his time. Correa but has that three specific hits. time of night. He loves he loves the eleven it. o'clock hour. He loves it. Um, the Astros lineup. Let's see. Everyone has a hit except Tucker and Maldonado, who only had two at bats, so he got hit by a pitch. Um, and then the Red Sox. Let's see. Bogerts has two walks. Every starter got on except Vasquez. So. Again, I, I think we also have to show these lineups a lot of respect because they're they're head to toe right now. I mean, Vasquez was hit, hitting ninth yesterday, and you were saying on the stream how you love him as a playoff baseball player. It seems like he puts a decent at bat together. Um, and like if Chaz McCormick's getting you three hits for Houston, that's just a tough ask. Chaz, I do Chaz. like both lineups. Who, who's pitching tonight for the for the Astros? Should we go into it? You have anything more on this game? I mean, obviously it's the Correa home run. The Altuve error could have loomed large, but he kind of corrected that. And then Kike is on absolute fire right now. Like if he comes out tonight and gets a hit to lead off the game, it's uh, we're 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 perking our ears up. I haven't looked at the stats, but you said this on the stream last night. If and I think it if Kike opens up with a double or even just a hit, we we we're reaching. A Rosarena from last year territory, and that's that's the thing that we're I'm, not there yet. But we're like, oh shit, he's on path to do like. Well, we're on it in one way. Like Randy was hitting a ton of homers. Up oh, there's busy the pug. Um, Randy was hitting a ton of homers, and it you know his home run numbers are still nuts. Kike's having these like four hit nights, like three, four, and it's. It's a couple now. Nah, we're and, there. Through six games, yeah. he's got a 500 batting average. So I did That's, check the numbers. I take back the hesitancy. If he opens up with a hit and his batting average is above 500 through 31 plate appearances this postseason, we're, th we're there. Well, that's I, I think, and maybe that's the difference, because I think Randy's power numbers, even what Kike's doing with the home runs, didn't Randy have 10 homers last postseason or something like that? Yeah, but let's uh, see what he did in like his first. Let's compare him game wise. Compare him game wise. So how many games has Kike played? Six, right? Six. And in Randy's first one, two, three, four, five, six games, he was batting five hundred. Look at that. And and Kike's batting five hundred. Randy had a higher on base percentage, five thirty eight. Randy had a higher slugging. He no, no, no. Kike has a higher slugging, and Kike has a higher. Or, but Randy had a higher OPS because of the on base percentage. Through his first six games last year, Randy had three home runs, and Kike's got four right now. Mm. But you got to remember, there's three wild card games. Yeah. Um, and Randy didn't hit his next home run until game one of the CS. And then that's where he really, I mean, in the CS, he hit four home runs and he didn't even start game one of the wild card game. Randy. <laughs> Sicko. So yeah, watch out for Kike. That's the story. Yes. And then I think that the, the Red Sox kind of have to, if in a losing effort, they kind of got to save their, their better relievers. Like if they did take the lead and, and then like they went to, he went to Robles in the eight, right. To try and try and hold it at a tie game. Yeah. I don't know if they were stayed tied or they took the lead who the plan is, but like Sarah Moore, Sarah Moore can't be the plan in like a, save situation against the Astros or a tie game in the ninth against the Astros. So like, I don't well, know. It was, the plan. Whitlock. it was Whitlock. Okay. We, that's we, yeah, we that missed sense. that. We missed that yesterday. So I guess maybe that was a Red Sox debate. Cause I know they're, you know, the bold bullpen is fluid for them. I mean, did, did they want Whitlock in the eighth? I mean, Robles kind of has to be a guy for them. So something to watch as the series develops, but yeah, I mean, as, as they go into tonight's game and I think we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, Avaldi might be the best starting pitcher in the series. I think he definitely is. Um, 
And so can you get Evaldi to Whitlock? Is that nine innings? Is is there a bridge there? Dugout Muggs will tell you about it. Dugout Muggs will tell you all about it. Obviously, Dugout Muggs is the best, and they have badass mugs, and they've been with us all playoffs and all these live streams. We're not live streaming tonight. Thank you to everyone that's been with us on the live stream. It's been a lot of fun. You guys helped me pick out my shoes yesterday, mm -hmm. and I appreciate you uh, for that. They're on their way. Also, my new couch is on its way, Jake, and I might might sit on the couch, drink out of my dugout mug. And if I take a wow. picture of myself drinking out of my dugout mug and I tag dugout mugs, then I have the chance to win free products from dugout mugs. And so do all of you. You just got to film yourself drinking from any dugout mug product, post it, tag them on social, and you're entered to win. If you don't have anything from Dugout Mugs, they're giving you a great discount to buy something new so you can enter the giveaway as well. They're letting you get a knob shot, shot glass for free. Dugoutmugs.com slash talking. All you got to do is pay the shipping and handling so it can get to you. Knob shot, shot glass for free. The Dugout Mug Collection. We have all the teams behind us during our live streams. It actually like makes it for like a really cool set. So if you have a man cave or any anything like that, it's uh, good for collectors. Great for presents. Dugoutmugs.com slash talking. They'll be with us tomorrow night as we stream. Are we streaming the NL game tomorrow night? Does anybody know? AL's off. So, yeah. Yeah. Easy. Easy decision then. All right. Well, what's game two tonight? Is it Garcia? Luis Garcia versus Nate Dog Avaldi. Um, so, hey, that should get you juiced up a little bit. Evaldi been one of the better starters in this playoffs. Luis Garcia, as fun as it gets. Um, and if he's good, I think he could go a little bit. But Houston should be piecing it together, too. And you wonder if it's uh, Grinky gets involved or what. If, if they come up with, like, a, a formula today, like you're saying. Yeah. And game two is a little different, obviously. Gonna gonna say a very obvious statement here. Game two is a little different in a seven game set. You heard Brian Roberts. Stop Brian Roberts. It's like the fourth time I've done it. You heard Dave Roberts and you heard Cora say when they were down one nothing in the DS that game two was all hands. Must win. I think it's must win for the Astros. But also in a seven game set, game two isn't as must win. But uh you the Red Sox go up. If the Red Sox take one on the road and then have three at home in Fenway, huge park factor, energy, like I think the Astros need to win this more than the Red Sox. Does that make sense? Ooh, yeah, that's a little hot, I think. Um Yeah. Garcia I, was I mean... not good last game. Like one of the only pitchers, the White Sox. Well, the White Sox got a lot of pitchers, I guess, but Garcia wasn't good. So you need a good start out of Garcia with McCullers out and like hopes of going to the World Series and stuff. You just got a bad start out of Framber. Guess get a good start. Same with Evaldi, but he's been good. Yeah, I mean, I just I just don't think teams are focused or care about that as much. I uh I, I'm interested to see. I mean, if Houston goes up 2-0. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be saying the cliches on here and Joe's dropped it the other day and we just started laughing like a ser series doesn't start till the home team loses a game. Uh, so we'll, we'll be in that mode. Um, interested to see, I mean, Evaldi is supposed to be the big bad wolf for the Red Sox. He has been, um, if Houston gets to that, I mean, that's, I think that's more significant than, than what you were saying before. I mean, he's kind of, uh, has to be the Red Sox. Um, kind of knight in shining armor if they if they want this series um i'm expecting more hitting uh just throughout this series and every game these lineups are are too tough um but yeah if, if you're the red sox i mean you've got Avaldi and whitlock which i think you can make up eight innings with those two guys and you you like them a lot so it's it's where's the buffer inning? Are they going to give Pavetta one uh, before game four start? Uh, the chess mask starts starts to pick up a little bit. And yeah, I mean, I, I think I think the pressure is a little more on Boston. If you if you take one from Houston, you're feeling good. Um, but, you know, then we'll be here talking about game three in Houston. Houston will have the chance to go up 3-0 against like Erod. So uh, I don't know. I, I think this game's this game's going to be hot. 
I probably said stated what I was saying weird because like like pressure is way more on Boston because if the Astros win it, they could lose all three at Fenway and still win the series. So I was saying okay. like I was saying Astros have more of the ability to like if they win today it 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 means more in my head to like that 85% goes like up for me drastically. If the Red Sox win it, I'm back to like 50, 50. Okay. That's obvious though. But I, I, I do agree with you that pressure is more on the Red Sox to win on the road. Okay. I like, I don't know if it's Pavetta's throw day, but imagine that imagine of goes six, you go Pavetta for, for one on a throw day, uh, to like a righty lane. And then you bring out Whitlock for two. And that's the formula. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, you know, with Brazier, who they've been confident in, he's on, he only threw seven pitches yesterday. Um, so, I mean, you, you can do that. I mean, there's, you, you need Evaldi to be good. Like, otherwise, if, if you're not getting six out of Evaldi, like, I think Pavetta is a thousand percent in play. Um, interested. And man, if they, if they have to go in the fourth or someone, I, I don't I don't know if they have enough good pitchers to get through the Astros. Yeah. Six out of Evaldi would be huge. I mean, he hasn't he's completed six innings once in his last one, two, three, four, five, six starts. So hasn't been his thing. I, against the Astros, I'd take five two run or less innings from from Valdi as a, as like a bar. They're so good. Their lineup's so deep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, and it, I think I think the leash gets really interesting because you mentioned his you know his last two starts. He went five point one against the Yankees in the wild card, but he only threw seventy one pitches, and like Cora pulled him because it was one game wild card. So like you know. That was going to be six innings for Evaldi. Uh, start before that against Tampa was 85 pitches. So, like, and they pulled him after that. So, uh, interested to see. I mean, it, I think that's a real, if Evaldi's 85 pitches through five innings, like third time through the lineup, if you're Cora, I think that's still your best option. But that's where, that's probably where the chess game begins in this one. He pitched, uh, someone in the chat just said, in 2018, Evaldi pitched against Houston at Houston in the CS game three. He went six innings pitched, two earned runs. Only four strikeouts, but, yeah, they'll take that. And, Jim, where was he born? He's got to be a Florida guy, right? Houston, Texas. Evaldi? Yep. Wow. Evaldi. Nickname, Evo or Nitro? Hmm. All right, NL game tonight. A couple thoughts before we wrap up, and I go to the farmer's market and then play disc golf with my father-in-law. Who are you rooting for? Ooh, who am I rooting for tonight? The game turns on. I'm feeling it. Honestly, Dodger fans have been mad at me for a little bit. Um, well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I... At this point, I think the Dodgers are going to win the World Series. Um, and, like, let's be honest, guys. We're, we're Yankee fans. Um, if Red Sox or Houston wins the World Series, that's a much longer offseason uh, for myself. So, selfishly, uh, I'm probably rooting for the Dodgers because I think Houston, Houston and the Red Sox are better than Atlanta at this point. So, um, I'm interested to see the Dodgers haven't announced their starter yet. Is that true? Um, I believe so. Are we getting Tony meatballs Gonsolin? Cause then I'm obviously rooting Dodgers. Um, I think when this game actually gets into action and Max Freed's on the mound and Atlanta is a huge underdog. Like, I think I'm going to be probably rooting Braves. Okay. I agree. Uh, I want Max Freed to pitch really well. I want this to be a close game. I want the Braves to take game one to make the series more interesting. Uh, if okay. the Dodgers beat Freed, if they beat him somewhat easily, if this game is Dodgers from like pole to pole, 
kind of a bad sign moving forward. Dodgers need to like sneak out a win with their best pitcher on the mound. And I, Braves need to sneak out a win with their best pitcher on the mound. And I'm interested to see if the Dodgers somewhat concede the Max Fried start, like you're saying, and just go with like Gonsolin and Appende. It's not really conceding it, but you know, it's not, it's not we're going to storm out and, and take game one by all means. They just well, played five games. That, that's kind of the thing. I mean, I, I think a lot of fans pretend that kind of stuff doesn't doesn't matter, but the Dodgers just flew from San Francisco after partying and winning a tough five game series. Meanwhile, uh, the Braves won in four and you know, they, they were chilling pretty much like, and you're facing Max Fried. And by the way, this Dodgers team said it, I'm becoming broken record on it. Like they're hitting just hasn't fully clicked all year. They won a two, one game against the giants. Um, they lost a one Oh game against the giants. Uh, you know, the, the two games they did put up big runs, like the Giants didn't throw their guys out there. This is Max Freed, who now has a nice playoff record, who was cruising at the end of the regular season. Like, this game points points to Braves, especially depend, if the Dodgers go, if this is Gonsolin Day, I mean, brave up. So Roberts did say, according to this article from sportstalkflorida.com, Hmm. He said about Scherzer, he's going to go out and play catch, get treatment, and if he says he's good to go, he'll be our game one starter. So that's going to be f- fucking cool. Early storyline. Yeah. Go Braves. Win game one. I don't think you're going to win the series. I like that. Let's all root Braves tonight. Fair is fair. Max you know? Freed's a friend. Nice guy. Max versus Max. Max versus Max. That would change everything, and I don't want to think about that. Okay. All right. Um, does um, does um, here we go. Does Jock mm. get a homer tonight? Hmm. Ooh, maybe that's a fun way to look at it. Like, what would <laughs> what would be things that are significant tonight? If Jock Peterson homers, that's a huge one. He's Does he high five his ex teammates around the bases. It's against his ex team. Um, you know, sometimes Jim uh, for our Yankee stuff, we'll do premonitions on the pregame show. Uh, yes. Get ready for the Jock Peterson uh, high five video. Uh, from before the game where he's dapping up against all, all of his former team. These are Jack Peterson's best friends. Um, I've got some really weird broadcasters that I watch the game on. But um, if Jack Homer's that significant today, is that the only thing? Who was... Uh, Mookie's I, I getting read- hot, I guess. Obviously, Kike was on the Dodgers last year, and Jock was on the Dodgers last year. Who who on the Astros was on the Dodgers last year? I read a tweet that said each remaining team has a member of the 2020 Dodgers on it. But I, chat, do you know? The Astros have a 2020 Dodger on their team. That's what uh, I read a tweet that said all the remaining teams have a 2020 Dodger. Uh, Pedro Baez is there now, but he's on the IL. Is that I, what they're doing to count him? Yeah, I, do, I, I don't know if there's somebody else. but Well, whoever said that tweet, then I don't like him. I don't know if they have an act, another act of him, but I know he's there. Just going through their roster I'm, real quick. Probably that. Probably that's like the stretch to make that a fun stat. Mm. I mean, Granky used to be a Dodger at one point. Jordan Alvarez was a Dodger, right? Well, he's in their, he was in their, in their system. In their system. Arm. Pedro Baez is what the chat says. Boo. Boo. Okay. I miss hey. him. He's a fun playoff pitcher, huh? Yeah, that's that's the episode. Everyone, episode. enjoy your Saturday. Thanks for joining us live. We will be back tomorrow. No, no live stream tonight. Back tomorrow.
whoever takes a picture of BBD on the streets wins. Couldn't hear you. 